started off uh, as soon as I finished up my master's degree at Springfield College. I uh, was able to get a job at Hudson Valley Community College uh, in Troy, New York, where I taught physical education uh, for eight years. And that led me to MIT. Uh, I was looking for more, um, an expanded role, uh, really wanted to learn more about the administrative side of things in addition to some learning some new classes on how to teach. Um, saw the opportunity at MIT. Um, obviously, the rest speaks for itself. MIT is just uh, a once in a lifetime opportunity, especially for someone like myself doing what I do, uh, teaching physical education. So yeah, and I've, I've enjoyed every moment of it since and uh, certainly not looking to, to move forward anywhere else in the, in the near future. Outside of being an assistant professor of physical education and wellness and teaching a variety of different courses in a lot of different um, you know, themes, basically our equipment manager. So I, I'm the person who's gonna be making all of the purchase orders uh, for the following upcoming year. Um, doing a lot of maintenance as well. So communicating with all the other faculty coaches as to what do they need for their classes uh, to make things a little bit more engaging and, and better for the next year. So getting all that stuff ordered and inventoried uh, before the summer comes and then everything's usually fired up and ready to go for the next year. Also just working with uh, my team. So Michelle, Carrie and Sarah, uh, working with them on various projects within our office to get things up and running for registration, a um, variety of other different things. Well, uh, luckily, uh, being in the position that I'm in, um, I've been able to and am currently serving on a bunch of different committees. Uh, some are within DAPER and some are outside of DAPER. So uh, just to name a few, uh, I'm working on the DAPER Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee, which is a committee that was just started this past fall. Uh, we're really excited about how that's progressed, um, and we're really looking forward to seeing how that develops as far as adding that um, to our department. And I think we're really headed in the right direction. I think everyone in the department has embraced it. So we're really excited to see how that progresses moving forward. I'm also involved in a Seaboard Diversity and Inclusion Committee. I've been doing that for this is my fourth year on that. I'm also part of the DAPER Advisory Board, which is a, um, an institute committee. Uh, yeah, I think that's essentially all. And oh, I'm sorry, I'm also a co-chair of our DAPER Mentoring Program, which has been a very uh, valuable program over the last four to five years. Uh, we've really seen some growth and development there and getting some uh, professional speakers to come and present just a week or two ago. Uh, so being able to get some funding and expand upon uh, what was laid out initially when that program was first developed has been great to see. So we're really excited about where we are with that. Well, the fact that it's a uh, general institute requirement is definitely a unique component to, to, our, um, to what we do with our classes. Uh, undergraduate students are required to receive eight points in order to graduate. So that usually equates to four classes. So the cool thing about that is, is we offer so many different um, variations of PE courses. It's still expanding. Now we've got some remote options as well. So I think you know, we've been doing a really solid job in meeting the needs of our students. So hopefully we're not going to be getting too many complaints um, about what we offer. Uh, moving forward, especially after the pandemic hit, we've definitely added a, a considerable amount to our curriculum. Uh, I have to say it's the students. There's a lot of different things that I really enjoy, but ultimately it's the, it's the social interaction with the students. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be able to work with roughly on average about 500 students every year that come through our classes and, and take my classes especially. And I got to say, I mean, they, they really are the best of the best. And to develop some relationships through them taking my classes, um, some of them will stay in touch after they graduate uh, just to send me a, hey, how you doing type thing, which is great. Uh, so definitely the relationships with the students is by far my, one of my favorite things. Um, that probably will never change. Well, I do teach about 16 or 17 different classes, but if I were to answer that question right off the top of my head, it would be archery. 
very different type of class uh, than your traditional physical education classes. Doesn't require, um, you know, a lot of running around and sweating and getting your heart rate elevated uh, prior to or during class. And I will say that archery, because of the mechanical and physic components that make up that class, teaching it is definitely something that uh, I had to adapt to when I got to MIT, uh, as far as my communication to the students, just using angles and things like that in my cues to give them so that they could practice them, uh, to, so they could work on their craft and improving their skills. But by far, it's archery. Uh, I think students really do enjoy that class. I don't know anyone that has not enjoyed the archery experience uh, since I've been at MIT. Uh, mine's going to be two, and it's going to be my parents. Um, They've been in my corner ever since, you know, I can remember. And they've always been there to give me some really good advice, whether it was things that I wanted to hear or things that were going to be not necessarily something that I wanted to hear, but it was good for me to hear that because uh, sometimes we get that false sense of reality um, as far as where do you see yourself in the future and how are you going to get there? What steps are you going to take? And I have to say that my parents were by far um, so supportive. Um, they were, they encouraged me to go to grad school. Um, they knew what I was really motivated to do as far as my career choice goes. And in order to do that, I was going to have to go back to school. And they really supported my decision to do that. And obviously, I've been leaning on them for a lot of uh, big decisions that I've had to make over the course of the last, you know, 15, 15 plus years. And uh, yeah, I certainly wouldn't be where I am without them. That's not to say there isn't a bunch of other people who have played a, a major role in me getting to where I am today, but there's no question that my parents has been, have been the biggest um, supporters and um, yeah, I wouldn't, can't thank them enough. Uh, I would tell them by far, we have so much to offer. Um, I can't imagine that there isn't something that we offer each quarter that we have classes that they wouldn't be interested in. There's gotta be something out there that would interest them. Um, we offer so many different types of classes. Our instructors are fantastic. I think the students leave our classes at the end with having a great experience, but also I think a new appreciation for uh, not only our instructors, but also what they've learned during that class, whatever that skill or skill set might be. Um, and I think a lot of them will come back and they may take the same class again and bring a, a friend or someone with them, or they might take some new classes with the same instructor or with some other instructors that I think just really challenge them outside of the classroom and it gets them away from their, their laptop, gets them active. I think in it, everything we teach them is a lifetime skill too. So these are things that they can continue to do after they complete uh, their course and their requirement once they leave MIT. So I think that's one of the really cool things is we have a lot to offer. Um, and ask questions too, because you know there's there's a lot that we can we a lot of answers that we can provide them with uh, based on their questions. Boy, if I if I had a if I could tell you how many times I've been asked this question by students over the years. Um, so obviously, to to become an MIT pirate, a couple of things go into it. Uh, number one is if you can complete all of the classes that are required to become an MIT pirate you've also completed your general institute requirement, eight points, which is pretty cool. Uh, so those classes are archery, pistol or rifle, you can pick one of those two, um, fencing and sailing. So the biggest challenge I will say, if that, if that ever comes up is being able to uh, get into the classes because registration fills up so fast, they're very popular. Um, so that's something that if you really wanna do become a pirate, you might have to try to um, come back to come back to it in a different quarter. Um, that's one of the advantages of having a quarter system too, is uh, as opposed to semesters, is you get five opportunities as opposed to two or three during the course of a year. So we do offer a lot of different sections. Um, the only one that we don't offer a lot of sections of is the sailing, and that's just due to the weather. So we offer that uh, early on in the fall and later in the spring.